electric vehicle battery technology improves and ranges increase, the need for a faster charge becomes more important than ever. If you're having issues not getting a full charge from a typical wall outlet overnight, then you need a level 2 charger. There's plenty of things to consider before getting one, such as the power output needed, whether or not to get a dedicated charger, and the cost benefit of such a purchase. If you're not sure yet which type of charger is right for you, we'll be making another video that will cover all of that and answer some of the most common questions. So be sure to check that video out, link will be in the description. First of all, a very big thank you to Clipper Creek for sending this charger out to us to check out. They offer a wide variety of chargers for pretty much every need, so be sure to check out their website. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Also, if you're new to EVs and want to learn more, we recently made a documentary all about the current state of electric vehicles. It takes a look at where EVs are now and what it's like owning one today. The Clipper Creek HCS 50P is their top of the line charger with an outlet plug. It features a maximum charge current of 40 amps when connected to a 50 amp breaker. If you want speeds faster than 40 amps, you will need to opt for the hardwired models. Due to the safety limitations of the NEMA 1450 outlet, you can't have a current greater than 40 amps. I would always recommend an outlet model whenever possible, but be sure to check out our other video for a deeper analysis of which one is right for you. Inside the box, we find a few things, including the manual, a pretty neat do not unplug tag, along with a dry erase marker, charger holster for docking on the wall, and a lock and keys. They've designed their chargers with a pretty cool little feature. With this lock, we can slide it into the hole by the release button on the charger. This will prevent anyone from unplugging your car without your permission, and it will also make it so no one can get a free charge without your consent if it's docked in the holster. A pretty neat little feature if you're going to be keeping the charger outside. Taking a look around this unit, it's pretty simple and basic. There's no confusing buttons or knobs, no Wi-Fi connectivity, just four lights and not much more. You just plug it into your car and start charging. Compared to a few other charts on the market, this one is pretty large, but it's built really well and looks pretty nice too. Coming out of the bottom, we find two cables. We get a one foot NEMA 1450 cable for the outlet, along with a 25 foot charge cable. Like all other chargers, there's a J1772 connector for most EVs. If you have a Tesla, you will need to use the adapter included with your car, but it works without any issues. A charger is no good without the proper outlet, and getting it installed was pretty simple and straightforward. It took a little over an hour to get everything installed. In my case, it required rearranging a few breakers in the box in order to make enough room for the 50 amp breaker. Then we ran some pipes along the ceiling to get power to where we wanted. It was just a matter of feeding our conductors into the pipe, wiring the outlet up, mounting the charger on the wall, and that was it. When deciding on where to place the charger, you'll need to consider a few things. First of all, it's not cheap to get an outlet like this installed. I needed it on the other side of the garage from my electrical box, which resulted in a $750 installation cost. If I were to get this installed on the same side of the garage as the box, it would have been around $500. A pretty large investment, but I would say that in the end it's definitely worth it. Beyond that, there's also a new federal tax credit for all EV charger related products, meaning you'll get a 30% return on the purchase and installation of an EV charger, lowering the price and making these more accessible than ever before. Also be sure to check out what other local incentives are available as there could be discounts from the electric company. I'll leave a link to Plug in America's website where you can see what's available in your area. Charging at level two speeds is so much nicer than our traditional outlet. To test out its performance, I used a 2017 Nissan LEAF SV. It has a max acceptance rate of 6.6 kilowatts, less than what this charger is capable of outputting, which is actually 9.6 kilowatts. But either way, I was able to charge out around 22 miles per hour compared to about 4.5 miles per hour on a normal outlet. With a car that's able to take full advantage of this charger's power, we can expect to see speeds up to 30 miles per hour. That's so much more than we could ever get on a normal outlet. Like I said earlier, Clipper Creek makes tons of different chargers for every use. If you have a Tesla which can take a higher charge current, they have a 48 amp model that can max out its onboard charger. If you have a Leaf that doesn't need 40 amps, they have lower powered models that cost less. The 50P that I have here costs around $650, but if you need less power, the price goes down from there. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I'll be sure to leave a link to this in the description below. 
I really like this charger and it has made it so much nicer to charge at home. It's very convenient and makes it a lot easier to get a quick charge if you're not going to be home for a long time. In the end, I highly recommend this charger and all of Clipper Creek's other products. To see all the options for yourself, go to Clipper Creek's website and take the quiz to find out which charger fits your EV specific needs.